Hello, I'm Grady Johnson. I'm the group publisher of SC Biz News. And in the upstate, we are GSA Business Report. In the Midlands, we're the Columbia Regional Business Report. And here in North Charleston, our brand is the Charleston Regional Business Journal. And I'm, I'm here today having coffee with Ryan Hudnell. He's the general agent of Mass Mutual South Carolina. Welcome, Ryan. Thank you, Grady. Glad to be here. Appreciate it. Good. Just, just to get started, Ryan, uh, tell, us, tell us just a little bit about yourself. W where'd you grow up? So I, I call Charleston home. I, I know better than to call myself a native because <laughs> I wasn't born here, but I have lived here the large majority of my life. My, my early childhood was spent in central Virginia, and my family moved down here when I was a kid. And uh, pretty much stayed right here, went to College of Charleston. I moved away a couple of times, tried the West Coast out for a little bit, tried Charlotte out for a little bit, yeah. but all roads came back to Charleston. So, 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 so when you got back, how did, how did you get started in, in this business? What, tell, tell us the path. You know, kind of, a, you know, it was one of these things. I was always very inspired to be a business owner, mm -hmm. and, uh, but I didn't, I didn't know what type of business I wanted to own. Um, I was given some advice by a mentor of mine who said, you know, you need to try to find a business where you can have ownership and, and reap the benefits of, of your work ethic without a lot of capital outlay. And at the beginning, when I started, I was in the life insurance business. And, and really, you know, the, the cliche of going door to door, um, I did that. Hmm. And uh, that kind of graduated into full financial planning. But that was, this was a business that I could get into and, and again, reap those benefits uh, with very little capital outlay and have my work ethic really prove what it was worth. So, so that was So uh, how long did it take to get from knocking on doors to becoming general agent? So all in about 14 years. Mm -hmm. So I took a path. Pretty I was fast. Yeah, it was relatively fast. Yeah. I was one of the, the youngest general agents in our corporate umbrellas system, Mass Mutual. Um, when I when I've, I've been six years now the general agent and I was at the time the youngest and one of the youngest in the history of the company. So that was a, a pretty cool thing. I think some of that was right place, right time. Mm -hmm. And the rest of that was, uh, I think, just determination. You know, I, I think fear of failure was a big motivator of mine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So, so tell us a little bit about the, the sort of the trajectory of the firm here locally uh, after you took the reins. What, yeah. So what, I'll start with a little bit of history. So the, the firm has real deep roots. It's a 75 plus year old firm, um, always been based in Charleston. It's always had the whole, the, the footprint has been the state of South Carolina. And the roots of the firm really go deep. And um, a gentleman by the name of Nick Zervis was the general agent. And then his nephew, Nick Gavalis, mm -hmm. who many people know. Yep, and know Nick quite well. Right. And, then, and after Nick retired, unfortunately, so at the time, the, the firm was always one of the top 10 firms in the industry, really not, not even just our system, but in the industry in terms of revenue and assets under management. And um, after Nick retired, you know, leadership issues, some things happened, and, and the firm really kind of took a dive. Mm -hmm. And so it was, uh, was kind of sad because even though I was working for a competitor, I, I knew that this was the firm to be with. And um, after uh, about seven years after Nick retired, the opportunity came open and I, again, was in the right place at the right time. So I came in in 2014 as a general agent and a lot of people would argue that it was kind of a cleanup job. Mm -hmm. um, but, that, you know, I'm up for that. I like that. I, I'm kind of motivated by those types of challenges. So when I came in... Um, we had 31 advisors. Um, today, we have just shy of 100 advisors. Wow. Um, we've got a thriving office in Greenville. You mentioned the upstate. Um, a, a wanting to thrive and starting to thrive office in Columbia. And then, of course, Charleston is our core and our hub. And so it's been a good run. Um, I, 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 I hesitate to take credit for it. I really do, because I think the, if, I was, if I was going to take credit for any of it, I would say that I've surrounded myself with really good people, Grady. Yeah. And, that, and again, that might sound cliche, but it, it could not be more true in this situation. And we've just built a culture of people that don't leave us. So those are, those are good things to have going. And the trajectory, you know, it looks, it looks good right now. Obviously, even amidst current times, the trajectory still looks and feels good. You know, there's always going to be challenges. And if it was easy, everybody would do it, right? Yeah, yeah. Give yeah. us a sense of scale. How many, how many agents in the upstate? So in the upstate, again, that's our fastest growing and candidly our most productive office per advisor. Hmm. So up in the upstate, I'd say we have 25 to 30 or low 30s of our advisors. Hmm. But again, when I got here, there were none. Hmm. Okay. Uh, 
I say none. There were none that were really tied to the firm. There were some independents up there that did business through right. us, right. but not that were really a part of the culture. So now if you really think about it, here we are six years later, and we have as many people in Greenville as we had in the whole state in 2014 when I started. Interesting. So that has been a, a real, uh, a, just a blessing. And, and I, love, I love it up in Greenville, too, so that helps. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, and a bricks-and-mortar office in yep. Greenville? We yeah. did, just in yeah. the last two years. Okay. We did. We, um, it's, it's not the size of what we have in Charleston downtown, um, but I, I suppose it will be mm -hmm. soon. Mm -hmm. um, but it is a standalone building right in downtown Greenville. And it's a great location, and, and it's, it's what we need right now. Yeah. And, and the key up there is the leadership. Uh, yeah. I hired the right guy. Um, I actually tried the first couple of years. I was trying to do it from Charleston and go up and do some recruiting and some growth. It just wasn't working. I needed, I needed local leadership, somebody that had a lot like Charleston. They want somebody that has some roots there. Mm -hmm. You know, they want to know who your people are. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I found somebody who people knew who his people are. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this, is, this is the South. That's you're right. That's who right. are your parents? That's, Where'd you grow up? You like? know it. That's right. Yeah. Um, uh, and, then, and then you're making some, some forays into the, to the, to the Midlands. So yep. uh, bricks and mortar there yet? or just Yes, agents? we do. We have, in fact, probably too much space there. So it's a little bit lopsided. If I yeah. could take some of what we have in Columbia and add it to Greenville, I would, um, but we had an opportunity um, with, a, with a large corporate merger a few years ago. There was some space already leased, and so I was able to take, take over a lease, yeah, yeah. and so it was, a, it was a smart business play. So we've, we've got a little bit too much space there right now, but again, I think I'm optimistic we can grow into it. Mm -hmm, yeah. mm -hmm. And then how many agents here in the, in the low country? The majority. Um, I would say 50 to 60, so probably yeah. closer to 60, and then that leaves, you know, again, Columbia with right that, that 10 to 12. Yeah. 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 So tell us a little bit about uh, about Mass Mutual. You know, why, you know, what's the differentiator? Why, why you guys? Why would somebody do business with you? Well, so Mass Mutual, so again, it's a, it's a unique model. So Mass Mutual is a, is a corporate Fortune 100 company. A lot of people, you know, they're, they, they're familiar with that company. Their system is set up to where each firm is actually individually owned and operated. And so my role is general agent synonymous with owner. Okay, a lot like a franchise system. I, I sometimes hesitate to use the word franchise because people automatically think of a, a fast food restaurant right, or something. Right, but, yeah, yeah. but that's what really what it is. And so we get to choose how we run the business. So Mass Mutual obviously is a great company. So to, but to answer your question, it's really about what are we doing in South Carolina. Hmm. And so our value proposition, and, and Mass Mutual has a great value proposition on the corporate level. But for us, we're really trying to make sure we can impact the communities. And so to answer the question on a local level, I would tell you, so first and foremost, we, you know, I have a, a philosophy in the firm, and that is culture before compensation. And so that's not just internal, that's external. So the culture of our relationships with our clients, the culture of our relationships in the office, all of that matters. And the, goal, the, the, the rule is we put that before we put income. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's tough because obviously everybody needs to make a living and we don't work for free. But I think that that has been, you know, when I ask the clients why they continue to refer us, and that's one of our the best, biggest blessings we have is constant referrals. And they say, because it feels good, it feels like a family. Uh, and, then, and then if you get into the, the actual X's and O's of it, you know, it's a full service financial planning platform. So a lot of people, you know, you hear Mass Mutual, you might think just the insurance or the risk management side, and I get that. Mm -hmm. I get that 100%. And that's where they started, and they're, they're very, very good at it. But that has evolved. And so now, you know, what I explain to people that we do, if people say, oh, you're in the life insurance business, I say, absolutely, but we, we are in the life insurance business as a part of a financial plan. So what we do is the, the goal is to work with the client, take care of the foundation, and then really be able to take them all the way through the accumulation distribution phases. So that, that is, I think, another value proposition that we bring is mm -hmm. that we can do all of it. Again, getting people to understand that is, is that's really the challenge because, again, people do put us in the box of being a life insurance company, um, which there's no shame in that. But it's funny because some people will call us and they'll say, well, you're my insurance guy. i got to go call my financial planner. <laughs> and sometimes we say, well, you know, we, we could be the same guy if you yeah. want us to, you know. But, uh, yeah, so but I think that, that makes us different yeah. and attracts yeah. people to us. Well, you know, here we, here we sit in the middle of this global pandemic and, you know, we can't sit here and pretending things are normal businesses as, as usual. Um, you know, plus it's a sort of the double whammy of, of not just the global pandemic, but, but civil unrest and some of these other, you know, things. Uh, yeah. how, how's, how is the, you know, the firm, when I say the firm, I mean local South yeah. Carolina. How, how, have you, how have you guys adjusted to that? 
It's what been, it, so it, at first it was one of those things, it was kind of like a fire drill. And everybody came out, you know, work from home. All of a sudden, you know, we get a call on Monday that our corporate headquarters was, everybody was going to work from home. Well, that drastically affects the way the business gets processed. And that was the Northeast. And so, you know, within a week, we were making the same call locally. And it felt like a fire drill. And so it was, okay, everybody's working from home. Nobody's in the office. Time out. Um, for me personally, working from home was a big challenge. I like to get up and suit up and go into the office. Um, so I, I kind of broke the rules. I went into the office alone um, for, for a few weeks there. Um, but the way, you know, technology has been a huge Im influence. I mean, that, of course, like everyone else, that's the answer you get from anyone you ask right now is what's mm -hmm. different. Well, we're having to do a lot vir virtually. Um, Zoom is certainly getting a workout. What I'm noticing now four months plus into this is that, you know, you can't do everything via Zoom. Um, at first, I think a lot of people are like, wow, we can cut travel budgets. We can do all of these cuts because we're proving that we can do it on Zoom. And I think now we're starting to realize that, you know, a, a, a handshake or at least an elbow bump is a big deal. Mm -hmm. and, and so driving up to Greenville to have meetings is something that I look forward to doing again. Um, you know, I will say that the, the pandemic has given me an opportunity. You know, business has been okay. Um, it's, we're not thriving. Um, it's funny, the financial planning side is, is thriving. The risk management side has, is, is about flat. Hmm. And again, reality, and that's across the board. You know, no shame in, in, in talking about that. Um, but I am taking this opportunity, so I'm a big believer in, in core values and, and really promoting and making sure that the advisors and their families, equally as important, that their families know who we are, what we do, who we are in the community. So I'm really taking the pandemic as almost an opportunity as a little bit of a reset for communication and you know, restating our core values, um, getting that culture before compensation met message back out there again, you know, for forefront. And so, I, you know, again, I'm trying to make, what do they say, make lemons out, or make lemonade out of lemons, yeah. right? Yep, yep. So we're, we're doing that. And um, it, it, you know, it's, it doesn't come without its challenge. I think right now, I believe that the, the best advice that I can give people is about mindset. It's not as much about um, strategy. Mm -hmm. You know, strategy is going to be there, and we're, we'll be reactive a lot these days. We kind of have to be, but mindset. And I think that abundance and, and the psychology and the psychological effect that this is having on a lot of people, I'm, I'm seeing it, feeling it a little bit, admittedly. But I think mindset and, and abundance and just trying to find those silver linings everywhere you can, and there are a lot of them. You know, there really are a lot of them. And I think that's probably some of the best work that we're getting out of this is you know, internally and mindset, not as much business or strategy. Yeah, yeah. You know, what I miss is is just being able to sort of gauge morale and some of those other right. intangibles with the staff. Have you uh, uh, have you have you experienced the same thing? What do you what do you mm -hmm. do there just to make sure everybody's feeling okay? That's a that's a hard thing to do on a telephone call. And exactly. You know. Well, and it's interesting because you know, in, in our industry and in a lot of industries, you know, you have. They're conference season, right? And summertime is conference season for us. And it's a lot of oh, times right, where you of get a lot of recognition and some awards and things like that. And it's, it's, there's some trips involved and none of those trips happen this year. Mm -hmm. And those are big morale boosting things. And you know, I, I personally had to cancel a, a pretty large agency trip. We were gonna go down to, to Georgia to a really nice resort and had to cancel that. That was gonna be a big boost. Um, so how am I doing it? I think just very intentionally. And like you said, it's hard to do it over the phone. But when, when, you know, in, in a vacuum, right? So that's, that's kind of what we need to do. Yeah. Um, so we're making a lot of phone calls. I am doing some things. You know, I'll send a, a care package with, you know, a box of popcorn and a Netflix card or something, you know, something like that to yeah. try to keep culture and keep people, you know, if, if somebody has a win in the office and, and we'll do something like that, yeah. Yeah. you know, or, or a gift card to a restaurant, things like that, just to, to make sure they know we're thinking about them. Um, but the challenge is the same one you're having, I think, gauging morale. It's only so much you can do on a Zoom call, you know? Yeah, yeah. And so I only have two big meetings a year, Grady. So I have one in January, and that's our kickoff. And we bring everybody from the whole state here to Charleston. You know, we've got a big full room, and we have guest speakers, and I speak, and that's a great meeting. Mm -hmm. And it's awards from the prior year. And then the second meeting every year is in August. And it's to kick off kind of going into the fourth quarter, right? So we're trying to get going like prior to September and then really get going for October. And we're not going to be able to have that meeting this year. So just before I was here today, I was on the phone with a potential speaker who's got a very inspirational story to, to share. 
And I think right now, stories that uh, show fortitude and, and, you know, everybody wants to be inspired. Mm. E even without a pandemic, they do. But I think right. now they really do. And so um, we'll, we'll do our best. We'll do our best. I think we'll be okay. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm waiting. Like I said, I look forward to the day I can give a firm handshake again. I miss a handshake, man. I do too. I, I swear you. I miss it. <laughs> I miss I a handshake. Really. My mom says, you know, I miss a hug. I miss a handshake and a hug, you know, yeah. it's true. Yeah, so. I, I think that, that that lack of contact with our fellow human beings is, is the worst of the school. Well, and it's scary to think, thing. is the handshake gone? Yeah. You right, know? Right. I mean, it, for it's got to be for a few years. Anyway, people are just going to hesitate. I think you're right. You know, it's, uh, right. You, know, you never know. I hope not, because yeah. I do think that... In, in business and in life, it's a it's a great way to, to greet somebody. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> Take it for so, granted. so tell us about Rye Hudnall. Uh, favorite hobby? Drum is I'm a drummer. Drummer, okay. Yeah, I've, I was I, I actually thought prior to getting into this business that I was going to be a, a professional drummer. I thought I was going to do that for a living. I came to my senses. <laughs> so yeah, drumming well, and, and hopefully hanging out hopefully not too much to your senses. <laughs> no, I still, I, that's right. Yeah, we don't want to. Yeah, you don't want to throw it completely away. No, I still play every day. Oh, thanks good. to my 11 year old son, he loves to play the drums. Good, so good. I got him my dream drum set. Nice. <laughs> which nice. was a pretty which, good. Thing. Which is actually your dream. Exactly. Drum set. Yeah, that's right. So, so that's right. favorite food. Favorite food. I've been so lately. So I got to give my fiance a plug. She is a she's a nutrition and health. Freak. And it's been a ma massive benefit to me, um, but she's been keep, keep me on a lot of really good, really creative fish recipes. Oh, wow. so I've been eating a lot of seafood, but but not what you think of you know when you go get fried seafood. It's yeah, right. Not, really the, not the southern culinary. style. Yeah, not the southern, not the southern, fried. southern yeah, style. Yeah, yeah so I've been eating a lot of, a lot of good fish recipes. Yeah, it's been good. 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 How about uh, how about favorite musician? Favorite or musician. Or favorite band. musician. Um, oh man, live music has been a huge part of my life. Um, I am, you know, the, the band that I've seen the most is not my favorite band anymore. I, 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 people are probably familiar with the band Fish. Yeah, I, sure. I saw Fish well over 100 times. Oh, you're one of those guys. Teens and 20s, you're yeah. You're one of those guys. And no shame in it. Now, yeah. there was a time in my life where I might have been a little embarrassed to admit that, but here yeah. at 43, I'm okay with it, you know. <laughs> you, live, um, you live through it. You can, I live yeah. through it, and, and, and everything's okay. Yeah. Um, but I'd say Stort Copeland, could being mm -hmm. a drummer. Yeah. Stort Copeland, drummer for the police. Um, yep. He is a major influence, and, and he's just got style for days. So cool. I like the question, though. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks for coming. We really appreciate yeah, you stopping fun. in. It's been great having, having coffee with you. This has and, been a lot of fun. Uh, Thank you. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll see you guys uh, on the next episode of Coffee With. Thanks. <laughs>